today, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about our little ones, our newborns, uh, the, when they're the most susceptible to, um, you know, being sick and all this, with the season coming up, with flu season and all this stuff. But specifically, I really want to talk to you about RSV. Um, and what it is and how we can prevent it and all of that. So um, to start, Dr. Sisson, would you be able to tell us a little bit about um, some of the common viruses around this time of year, specifically, you know, RSV and, and what we can look out for? Well, I think everyone's aware of being concerned about cold and flu during this time of year. RSV yeah. is probably one of the most common cold and flu type viruses or respiratory viruses that we think of. Um, RSV itself, uh, the season is October to April or May. Um, we as adults may get it frequently and not even realize it's anything more than a cold. Children under the age of two can be a little more adversely affected and they can, they can have some wheezing, but it's the children under one, the premature infants that were discharged from the hospital, the newborn ICU, and the newborns in their early course that can be even more harm, harmfully affected in the sense that they may need to be hospitalized. The RSV itself is the leading uh, cause for hospitalization under a year of age. And once you're hospitalized, you may need oxygen. Some of these children are even placed on a ventilator. And some of these, the ventilator is not enough and there's more, for, more advanced forms of life support. And some children even still progress to passing away from this. Really? Oh my gosh, that's horrible. You know, because you think, oh, it's just a common cold. And, and that's something that as a new mom, especially first time moms, I mean, I've had two, but I still don't always know. You have this new newborn little baby, and they're showing little signs of, of a cold. How do you know when it's serious enough? Well, how do you know that it's RSV versus just a cold? Like, how can a mom, you know, tell? Are there certain signs or symptoms that are unique to RSV? Well, the signs and symptoms tend not to be as unique, but uh, care should be watched on how the child changes in the sense that, you know, we, the cold symptoms of cough and congestion and runny nose that we associate with all colds, both in adults and children and infants, mm -hmm. are present, but it, then it progresses and changes. You have a child that becomes air hungry in the sense that they're, uh, they may have breathing that's irregular or too fast. Uh, they may have uh, blueness around their lips, gums, tongue while they're uh, uh, coughing. Uh, what also will happen is these children become air hungry to the point where they're refusing a pacifier or a bottle or feeding in general. During that time, they can become listless and, and not as playful. So you have a child that maybe on one day had what you thought was just a run-of-the-mill cold that your neighbors or your older children had, to the next day or two, it's no longer the same child and they're not even eating correctly. That's when you need to have them evaluated by your pediatrician or your doctor or the emergency room. Okay. Uh, now, Carrie, uh, you've had a personal, person experience with RSV. Um, I'm hoping you could share with our members what it was like for, your, for you and uh, your twins when they contracted it. Absolutely, my twins were actually born at just over um, four pounds and 36 weeks and two days, which is full term and a healthy weight for twins. Um, they did not go to the NICU and they came right home with me, very healthy little boys. And just before their first birthday, they both contracted RSV. Um, Dominic was actually in the hospital with um, severe RSV symptoms with, and on oxygen for 11 days. And wow. Alexander um, ended up on life support and he ended up losing brain function and he did not survive RSV. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's, uh, that's so scary. That's so scary. Yeah. And they were almost one. That's, um, yes. you know, you think, oh, well, we're out of the clear, you know, you stop worrying so much. But that's just so important to get this word out so that parents don't, you know, take it for granted and, uh, you know, make sure that they get the, the help that they need. Um, oh, man, <laughs> I want to make sure that, you know, all of our members are prepared and, and know, you know, I don't know many doctors that mind you coming in for something that's nothing. You know, I feel like it's better safe than sorry. If you have any questions, you know, if you think, I'm not sure if my baby's having trouble, but it may be, it's always safe, safer just to go and get them evaluated. Absolutely. I always tell everybody, you are your child's advocate. You need to talk for them. If your child isn't acting like they normally do, you know, you're the parent, you know them best. Take them in. Do you have any um, advice for premature, for parents of premature infants? Um, you know, anything that they can that from your personal experience that they can use um, going forward you know, to prepare for RSV. Absolutely, be sure you're washing your hands really well, you and your spouse, and 
Um, children, especially if you have older kids coming home from school, be sure they're washing their hands. Grandparents, mm -hmm. anybody who's going to be visiting the baby, make sure they're not sick. If they're sick at all, make sure that reschedule your, your visit with them. Um, washing hard surfaces to make sure you can clean off that RSV that can live on hard surfaces and staying away from large crowds. Wow, that's good advice. That's good advice. Um, and, you know, just to kind of practicality, it's like those that advice, I think we take it seriously, you know, when our babies are first home from the hospital, first mm -hmm. couple months. But when you get into, you know, six, eight, ten months, they're crawling around, they're on the floor, there's germs everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep their environment so protected. So I guess it's just being diligent in, in washing their hands and keeping the surfaces clean as possible and really doing your best. But I think the, the key here is watching your child and really yes. looking for those signs and at the first sign um, getting them evaluated. Is that am I understanding correctly? Absolutely. Take them in. If, if they're not acting like they normally do, take them in. Yep take them in. Well, thank you so much. Oh, is there any um, anywhere resources online that I can send our members to um, where they can see this information as well? Definitely try rsvprotection.com. It's a wonderful resource. It lists signs and symptoms of RSV as well as preventative measures. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to be sure to spread the word, get the word out thank to you. all of our new moms. And um, again, I'm very sorry for your loss. And I, I'm thankful that you're helping to spread the word and, and you're such a great advocate um, to get the word out there so that we can hopefully prevent this happening in the future. Thank you.